Welcome to Ucanic. In this video we're going to show you how to find out why your check engine light is on. So if your check engine light comes on, a lot of people panic because you know you just think that's going to be an expensive repair. But that's not always the case. And what we're going to do here, we're going to show you how you can find out, you can read the codes, find out what codes there are, how to do a little bit of research because most of the time the problem can be something very simple. It could be as simple as a loose gas cap actually. You can eliminate those basic repairs yourself and even if you have to take it to a shop you'll have a better understanding of what's wrong with your car. That way you can also research prices and repairs and be informed when you go see your mechanic. So what we'll do, we'll use a basic OBD2 scanner. Now when you take your car to a repair shop or to your dealer they have a professional level scanner what those scanners do is that they can read, for example, Mercedes specific codes. This light, the check engine light also sets a generic code, meaning a code um, that's required for emission purposes. So those codes are pretty standard and a generic OBD2 scanner can read them, a Bluetooth adapt. Um, they can read your codes and 9 out of 10 that generic code will give you enough information as to what's wrong with the car. Now there are a few cases that you'll need a professional scanner but this is a good starting point because you can really eliminate a lot of issues um, and find out why your check engine light is on. So here we can see uh, the check engine light is on and this is a Mercedes Benz but this procedure really works on any make and model. Um, and these scanners you can buy on your favorite online store. You don't have to go for an expensive one because they really all do the same thing. We're gonna connect this under the OBD2 port and now all vehicles have the OBD2 port. It's called onboard diagnostic port and it's located under the dashboard. It has this trapezoid shape so it's uh, this is the male and the female is under the dash. Uh, most of the cars will have it right under the dash. It might be covered, uh, it might be in the fuse, like if you have a fuse panel right here it might have a cover that you pop that off and then you'll see the port. BMWs and Mercedes have, have it further uh, down it just still has a little cover um, about that big you just have to pop that out and then you'll see the port um, very few cars like some Subaru Saabs and uh, maybe some Porsches might have it on the center console uh, right next to a cigarette outlet or right under here actually on the central arm rest and very very rare um, it could also be on the passenger side on the side right here so the 99% of the time it'll be right under the dashboard. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so we have plugged in the scanner and once you plug in the scanner, the next thing you'll need to do is turn on the ignition. One, two clicks, if you got a key you have to turn. Uh, your dash lights will turn on. Do not start the engine, even though you can read the codes with the engine running. If your car has a start stop button, what you'll do is you'll press that start stop twice without pressing the brake pedal. That will turn on the ignition, but will not start the car. And then that will power on the scanner. On your scanner, once it powers on, just simply press enter. This goes through the different protocols. So domestic, Asian, and some European cars uh, will use different protocols, but all this scanner will do is we'll just go and test each one and see which one is uh, this vehicle using. Once you run the test it says mail, um, malefaction indication light is on. Um, it will show you how many codes there are and how many systems are ready for uh, to pass a mission. We'll go over that in a minute. Right, so and here we'll just select engine and then this is where we read the codes, we can clear them but clearing them doesn't necessarily fix anything um, because you first need to understand what's wrong with your car and address that issue. So we'll press enter to read codes and then we'll read stored codes and you can see camshaft position, sensor, A circuit, high bank. But most important is this right here P0348 and we have only one code. All right, so you can also read pending codes. These are codes that uh, might be coming up. The system has detected an issue, um, but it's not hasn't triggered that code yet because it hasn't detected it enough times to say, "Hey, this is a permanent code. This is a, a issue that's you know it's not going away." 
so um, those are pending codes uh, a lot of times when somebody uh, sells a car for example they will clear the codes with a scanner like this or they'll just disconnect the battery and what happens is that uh, you start the car and your check engine light is off uh, but then these these pending codes because the issue hasn't been fixed so uh, the pending codes are there for two three days or so and then it goes into a store or current code depending on the scanner it might say current code okay so uh, look out for that uh, and then once you figure out the code what you want to do is uh, in this case we'll show you where that um, uh, camshaft position sensor is a lot of times you'll will say uh, you might have an EVAP um, a system leak uh, which could be due to a loose gas cap but what you do is you'll take that code P0348 and then you'll make um, whatever it is Acura, Dodge, Lexus, BMW, Mercedes just the name of it um, and then go online and then search your code, your make and hit enter and then you'll get a lot of results but you can start reading out those top two three uh, results and those are more likely to be what's the problem in your case as well um, not always that's not always going to be the case but at least just that code will point you in the right direction you probably end up seeing pictures of the parts that could be wrong um, a lot of times it's very straightforward like in this case it's actually pretty straightforward p034 camshaft position sensor circuit high so we're here by the engine you see the engine cover right here it's I look like it's hard to come off but it's just pops right off and that's the case with most modern cars nowadays they will have a big plastic cover on top but the most that they have is a few plastic retainers and that's about it um, then here we have the camshaft position sensor now this vehicle has four one two on this side and two, it, two on this side it's a v, uh, V6 engine so but with that code if you research that further you will be able to find that it's this sensor right here and honestly to replace this one all you have is a female torx um, all you have is a torx bolt right here that you take that off you disconnect this connector and then you simply pull this out and replace it it takes 15 minutes the most so something like that will be really easy of course if it's your gas cap it will be really easy as well um, but once you address that issue you want to go back read the codes and clear them now you don't necessarily always have to clear you can a lot of times if you think you address the issue you drive the car for two three four days the check engine light will continue to monitor that sensor it will see that it's not uh, having an issue anymore and it will just reset the check engine light on its own it will reset that code so yeah you don't necessarily always have to clear the light if you don't want to but since you're doing all this work it's usually good practice to go ahead and clear the light and just uh, make sure it doesn't come back on so uh, let's take a look though how you clear that light next once you fix the problem you'll come here and erase the codes right press enter enter erase done then once you do the erase turn off the ignition wait five seconds turn it back on and then start but one thing that's really helpful in this, um, and most scanners offer this, is called IM readiness. So this can, this is very critical because it can tell you two things, or it can help you in two scenarios. One, if you need to take the vehicle for emission test, you can just basically, before you head to emission station, you can just plug in a scanner, check if the emission status is ready, and you head down otherwise you might go all the way down there and they'll tell you like uh, you need to drive your vehicle some more um, because you just erased the code or maybe you just disconnected the battery it's because most vehicles have seven systems that monitor um, emissions and if the check engine light was cleared it takes some time for those systems to check if they're operating properly so that's why like emission readiness it takes usually two three days of driving um, you know two three cycles per day and within a week basically your vehicle should be ready to pass emission test if, as long as there's no other issues right as long as you don't have any pending codes or anything like that but um, the one other thing that this can tell you is if you bought a car 
and somebody erased that check engine light before you went to look at it, this can tell you. So it's really good to have one of these scanners with you, especially if you're buying a vehicle, and just have one of these scanners and check if the check engine light was erased. And let's take a look at how that looks. So you'd come to I am readiness, or am I say emission readiness or something along those lines, and it'll say this driving cycle, we don't we don't want this driving cycle. We wanna see since DDCs were cleared. We want to go back as far as we can. All right, so check engine light is off. Um, misfire monitor is on, on. So here you see all these systems that say, okay, okay, okay. But then look at that catalytic monitor incomplete. It's because catalytic monitoring takes a few driving cycles to test itself and say, yep, you're okay. So that means because we just erased the check engine light that's going to be incomplete. It's going to look the same way if you go buy a car and somebody erase the check engine light it's going to show incomplete. It's going to show incomplete on a few systems not on just one. You might say incomplete or you might say not ready. It's basically the same thing. So here we have EVAP system monitoring so your know, fuel system it's sealed. If it's leaking, if it's got an issue like that um, it's going to set a code. That takes a few driving cycles as well. If you just erase the code it's gonna take two, three days for that code to come on or to say, okay, no issue with that system. So it's not saying okay, it's saying incomplete, we just reset it. Uh, secondary error system, incomplete. Uh, here you have NA and you'll have some systems that say not applicable, don't worry about those. Um, you're looking to make sure that you have all systems okay and not applicable if there is any not applicable but in this case look at how many incompletes we have I mean a car that's been driven and hasn't had the check engine light uh, reset in the last you know let's say one or two weeks or hasn't had the battery disconnected it's not going to have any incompletes okay so now the other thing with these incompletes if you take this vehicle for an emission test they're gonna tell you you can't pass the emission go drive some more and come back uh, so yeah, uh, you can you can check here. Once all these show okay, you, you are good to go and take it for a mission test. Um, one thing to note is that a lot of times there's auto parts stores that will read your codes for free. Uh, all they're going to give you a code and a description. It's important to just go and do some research on your own and try to understand what is going on. Even if you don't plan on fixing the issue. A lot of times it could be something very simple like a mass airflow sensor for example. It might sound scary at first but it's literally on most cars it's only two screws. It's pretty easy to access and it's the part itself it could be like $50 at most versus if you go to auto repair shop or if you go to your dealer you're going to pay three, four, five hundred dollars to replace a mass airflow sensor. If you think you have a, a loose gas cap well, you're going to get a code for that. Uh, we do have a database with all the codes and what they mean. You can you can simply search Ucanic DTC codes. Yep, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you got any questions, make sure to read our guide below. We'll go into uh, more detail. And thank you for watching.